All right, we'll call this meeting of the Educational Facilities Improvement District Board to order this Wednesday, May the 19th, 2021. I ask Ms. Jenkins to please call the roll. Mr. Daniels? Here. Mr. Duncan? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Burgoyce? Present. Mr. Cooper? Here. All right, quorum being present, we'll proceed with the, um, the meeting. Ask everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we take up any action items, uh, I, I, will, uh, I do need a motion and unanimous consent to add an item to the agenda, specifically an item to elect a new uh, secretary, at least a secretary for the purpose of today's meeting. Uh, so the first motion that I would take is a motion to waive the rules so that we can add an item to tonight's agenda. Is there such a motion? So moved. I second. Okay. Motion is made by Mr. Daniels, uh, seconded by Mr. Uh, Miller was the first part, two people I heard. Um, is there any objection to waiving the rules so that we can add uh, a, an item to the agenda? Without objection, then, the, uh, the motion is agreed to. The rules are waived. We'll now uh, receive a motion to add to the agenda the election of a secretary of the board. Will, will someone make that motion, please? I so move to add the item to the agenda. All right, motion is made by Mr. Ver Verboise. I second. Trayvon makes the second. Is there any objection to the motion? Without objection then, the motion is agreed to and that item is added to the agenda as Agenda item H. All right, we'll now take, we'll now go to consideration of the approval of the minutes for February the 3rd. We're going to do the election in just a mo moment. I'll do that in just a second. I said move uh, consideration approval prior minutes. All right. The motion is made by Mr. Ver Verboys to approve the minutes of the February the 3rd, 2021 meeting seconded by um, Mr. Daniels. Is there any objection to the motion? Without objection then, the motion is agreed to and the minutes are approved. We'll now take up the election of the new secretary. We'll be uh, out of order. So Ms. Jenkins, if you'll let us know when you can, can we go ahead and take that up? Sure. Okay. Um, is there a nomination for secretary of the, the board? Nominate Mr. Burr. I have a motion from Mr. Daniels for Mr. Verboys. Second that. Okay. Are there any other nominations for the position of secretary? Motion to close nomination. Motion is made by Mr. Miller to close nominations. Second. Seconded by Mr. Cooper. Um, any objection to the closing of nominations? Hearing no objection, nominations are closed, and Mr. Verboise is elected secretary by acclamation. Congratulations. Make sure you keep your hand rested. You'll have a lot of signatures to do in just a moment. So moving on to uh, agenda item D, which is to consider approval of a resolution providing for the canvassing of the returns and declaring the results of the special election held by the district um, on April the 24th, 2021. Mr. Parker is here uh, to, um, to walk us through this, this item, I believe. Is that right, Mr. Parker?
loudly, so hopefully that carries through. Um, so there's four separate items to consider here. Um, typically with an election, we would have three. We break them up into different parts to save on publication costs as, as well as recording costs instead of recording one very long document. This very first one is a resolution essentially can, it states the results of the returns of the election. And then we have this published in the uh, local paper and it's pretty straightforward. I'm, I'm sorry, I can hear in the background. Okay. So at any rate, yes, this first one is for canvassing the returns of the election. Um, we will publish it, and um, okay. I can go through them each individually or however you like. Well, let's just see. Do, do any members have any? I know we were, we've all were provided with a copy of the resolution. Um, any members have any questions about this particular resolution? Uh, the only Mr. Miller? I have, all of these are standard for all elections, right? I'm going by my recollection with the parish government when we have them. This is basically for us to acknowledge that the election took place, it was properly executed, it was properly counted, the results were affirmative for this, and we accept all that. It, with one exception, that's item G, and that's just because there's a cooperative endeavor agreement between the district and um, the school system. By virtue of the EFID statute, basically, there, it allows for a cooperative endeavor agreement. There's already an existing cooperative endeavor, cooperative endeavor agreement from 2011, so we just amended and restated to make sure that the dates are correct, the results of the election are correct, and to state the purposes for which the tax can be expended, which is salaries and, and benefits for uh, local school system employees and support staff. So that's the only difference. Otherwise, it's you know, exactly as you would have done. All right, so G, though, is it's the actual cooperative endeavor agreement between this board and the school board. Correct. Or this commission and school board on how the dollars are spent. Okay, all right, so there may be some questions there. Sure. If it's okay with you, can I make a motion that we Take D, E, and F all together? Yes. That, that, that we approve D, E, and F? All right. So the motion is to uh, approve the resolutions for agenda items D, E, and F. Second. A second is made by Mr. Verboys, and we'll ask for a specific voice vote if you'll call the, the roll, Ms. Jenkins. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Mr. Verboys? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. All right. So that leaves then item, agenda item G, which is the cooperative endeavor agreement. Um, Mr. Miller, did you have some additional questions related to that? I'd just like to re have make sure that uh, I, I understand exactly what it says in it. So if we can either kind of go point the big bullet points or let us reread it and, mm -hmm. and uh, make sure it's the way we see if there's anything we want to work on so this agreement is essentially it, after all collection costs of the tax have been um, completed you know basically all remaining revenues are then remitted by virtue of this agreement to the school board there's no funds that are left with the EFID um, except for the cost of the collection of the tax which are just you know paid for out of out of hand at the start right so that's essentially all it does very simple agreement between the two boards and um, it's a formality of the two being different uh, political subdivisions instead of one and the same. Okay, did I misunderstand that maybe I misunderstood that this is not where we, where the school board talks about the agreement between us and how, they, how the money is actually expended with the raises and so forth? It, it does. states what, that, the states what, what, I, where are those items? I'm sorry, I, I should have done my homework better. That's okay. So the, um, well, it's partly addressed in the third paragraph on the first page, which restates the proposition <clears throat> right. itself. But the main place I think that you're looking for is sec yes, section five, which says the obligations of the school board under this agreement um, in, in exchange for receiving the money is number is letter A, they have to receive the proceeds and utilize those proceeds at the discretion of the school board for the funding pursuant to the proposition as permitted by the act um, of any matter for which the school board is authorized by the proposition and the act to expend those funds. So that's why I first mentioned the proposition itself, which says that it can only be used for the purposes of raising salaries. So then 
the second ob the other obligations are just to make a persons available to the district um, to help us do our jobs and to expend any uh, dollars necessary uh, to um, to do the the things in outlined in the cooperative endeavor agreement it may help you. School board intends to have a special revenue fund to track these costs so when they're transferred into the school board's records it'll be a special fund that will hold those dollars and then they'll be transferred to the general fund for dispersed to the employees and that will be documented yeah I, I get I mean, obviously you guys that are in office and in the positions today are going to do what you said you're going to do because yes. you push for this I mean you put your necks on the line five years from now ten years from now 12 we'll years from now, y'all may or may not be the people sitting here. It will still have the same requirements, and it will still be set up the same way, where the funds will be transferred into a special revenue fund, and it will be transferred to the general fund to accommodate the 7%. You know, the commitment we've made to our employees that will carry on is that any remaining funds that are above, beyond, that are collected above the 7% would be then distributed back to the employees as salary only. I think the, the, one other point, too, on the purpose within the proposition, you would have to have a separate election to expend it for anything else because there's not other available uses of the district. It just says solely for that, you know, be benefits, salaries, et cetera. You would have to go get a rededication of the tax to send it and, elsewhere. And then the, the other thing that's layered on top of that, and I, and I appreciate, you know, because I know we all, ever, all of us that worked on the election, this was very important to voters, was to make sure that this was going to be used exactly the way that we said it was. But it's also my understanding that once the board raises salaries or sets salaries at that higher level, we are statutorily prohibited from lowering those unless the funds are no longer available to fund those, those increased salaries. So we, would, we wouldn't be able to go any lower unless the, the tax didn't get renewed. Okay. But any other questions? For you had also link, even though this is silent in the cooperative endeavor agreement, we still are anticipating additional MFP fundings that are going to be spent as defined by the board and uh, the school board and this education facility board. Mm -hmm. Not, the, I mean, this isn't part of a. Has there been an estimate on what with the new rate of sales tax and presuming that sales continue like they are with this half penny will actually bring We have in. not gotten a new revised okay. estimate. It's still sitting around 10, but. You didn't ask so you couldn't answer that question in public. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on the cooperative endeavor agreement? All right. Is there a motion then? I so move. No. Motion, motion is made to adopt or what are we doing? Reaffirming the cooperative endeavor agreement? It's a resolution and oh. it's the form attached to it. So okay. you're, just, you're approving a resolution. We're, we're, okay. Motion is made to approve the resolution as presented. I second. Well, the motion was made by Mr. Verboyce, I believe, and seconded by Mr. Miller already. My mistake. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and uh, any other discussion? Is there any public input? Is there any objection to the motion? Without objection, then the motion is agreed to. Thank you. There being no other action to come before the board, um, this meeting is adjourned. And of course, so we'll keep that in touch with y'all. Hopefully, we'll keep in contact. So hopefully, you know, present y'all information as we collect the funds, so you'll know where they're going and how they're being July spent. July one, right? July one is when the collection starts. Now keep in mind the retail outlets will start collecting the money July 1. They'll remit it to the sales tax on April 20th, and we'll actually see it effectively starting um, um, September August 20th. August 20th. I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> August 20th. We'll see it on September 1. Right. But our salary schedules, just so you know, will reflect our 12-month employees will see it in their July check, and our 9-month, 10-month, and 11th employees will see it in their first check of the next school year, which is August. Okay. Thank you all for your service and yep, anything else? Okay.